If you are looking for a complete guide that will help you understand the Intel 8085 microprocessor architecture in the most simplified language, then this video tutorial is for you. In this video, you will learn 8085 architecture, its functional components, and the interaction between various functional units, step by step. Let us start with a quick introduction to 8085 microprocessor. The 8085 microprocessor was one of the first 8-bit processor launched by the Intel Corporation in year 1976. This was also one of the most commercially successful processor that is still being used in many devices. After the success of 8085 processor, the Intel also launched many processors with 16-bit, 32-bit, and 64-bit architecture. However, it is important for the students of computer science to first study the 8085 architecture in detail. This will help you understand some of the most important foundational concepts necessary to study the microprocessor architecture and how CPU works. Once you learn 8085 architecture, then learning other complex architecture will be much easier for you. Welcome to LearnComputerScienceOnline.com, and in this video, we are going to discuss Intel 8085 microprocessor architecture in detail. In this video, you will learn all the foundational concepts necessary to understand the Intel 8085 microprocessor architecture, its functional units, and the technical features. Before we dive into our main topic, it is important to first understand the functioning of the microprocessor and how CPU works. The microprocessor is the brain of the computer system. The main function of the microprocessor is to execute the program. A computer program essentially consists of set of instructions that directs the CPU to perform various operations as per the program instruction. The program instructions are stored into the main memory, RAM. Each program instruction residing in the memory is a represented by machine instruction in binary. These machine instruction in binary can be directly decoded and executed by the processor. The CPU initiates the program execution by fetching, decoding, and executing each instruction one by one. The CPU executes the program by repetitively performing its basic operation, called the instruction cycle. The instruction cycle is a three-step CPU operation, which includes fetch, decode and the execute operation. So, now I presume, you know, how microprocessor works. Let us now move on to the next topic. Since we are studying the microprocessor architecture, let us find out what is microprocessor architecture is all about. The term microprocessor architecture is the design and the layout of various functional components that exist inside the microprocessor chip and how these various functional units interact with each other when the microprocessor performs various operations. In order to simplify the study of 8085 architecture, let us group all the microprocessor components into five major functional units. Each of these functional unit performs a specific role. These microprocessor functional units are as follows. The first unit is the memory unit. It is also referred to as the register unit. The second unit is the arithmetic and logic unit, ALU. The third unit is the instruction decoder and the machine cycle encoder unit. The fourth unit is the timing and control unit. And finally, the fifth unit is the interrupts and the serial communication unit. Let us now take a quick look at some important technical features of the 8085 microprocessor. It is a 8-bit processor. And this processor has total 40 pins. It works on plus 5 volts supply. It has an execution speed of 3, 5 and 6 MHz variants are available. It has 8-bit data bus. In other words, it has 8-bit word length. It has 16-bit address bus. And it can address up to 64 kilobyte of memory. It has a 16-bit 
Program Counter Register, PC. It also has a 16-bit stack pointer. It has six 8-bit general purpose registers, referred by its name, that is B, C, D, E, and H, L. This processor operates at 3.2 MHz, single phase clock. The 8085 processor supports 8 software interrupts and 5 hardware interrupts. Let us now discuss each of the 5 8085 microprocessor functional units in detail. Let us start with the first unit, that is, memory unit, also called as the register unit. The internal memory of the processor, built into the processor chip, is called a register. In other words, the CPU registers are high-speed temporary memory present inside the processor chip. These registers are used by the 8085 processor to store the data, addresses, and machine instructions during the program execution. The CPU makes use of different types of registers placed inside the processor chip. The CPU registers can be grouped into two types. The first type is called general purpose registers, and the second type is called the special purpose register. The general purpose registers are used to store the data in the temporary memory during the program execution. The 8085 processor has six general purpose registers that can store eight bit of data. The general purpose registers are named as B, C, D, E, H, and L. These registers can also be combined to form a register pair, such as B, C, D, and H, L, to perform the 16-bit operations. The 8085 processor also make use of some special purpose registers during the execution of the instruction cycle. The special purpose registers are used to store a specific type of data and perform a special function. And therefore, they are called as special purpose registers. Some special purpose registers are accessible to the programmer, whereas some special purpose registers are not accessible to the programmer. Let us now take a quick look at some important registers and their functions. The first register that comes into action is the program counter register, PC the program counter register, is a 16-bit special purpose register used in the 8085 architecture to store the address of the instruction that needs to be fetched from the memory. The program counter register always stores the memory address of the next instruction that needs to be fetched from the main memory RAM. As the processor begins the fetch operation, for the first instruction, the program counter register is incremented by one at the same time, so that it now points to the address of the next instruction that is to be fetched from the memory. The second register that comes into action is the instruction register, IR. The instruction register is a 8-bit special purpose register used by the processor to store the part of the instruction that needs to be decoded by the decoder of the control unit. Depending upon the instruction format, the control unit of the CPU decodes the instruction as specified in the OP code of the instruction format. The OP code stands for operation code. It is OP code that is decoded by the decoder and machine instruction encoder unit. The OP code part of the instruction is stored into the 8-bit instruction register during the execution of the instruction cycle. The third register that comes into action is the accumulator register. The accumulator is considered to be a part of arithmetic and logic unit, ALU. The accumulator stores the operand part of the instruction format. The arithmetic and logic unit ALU is another important component of the processor, which actually performs the arithmetic and logical operations. The arithmetic and logic unit of the CPU performs the desired operation on the data placed in the accumulator as per the operation code decoded by the decoder of the control unit. Let us now understand what is flag register. As we have discussed earlier, all arithmetic and logical operations are performed by the ALU. During the ALU operations, the flag register plays an important role. 
The main function of the flag register is to indicate the status of the processor after each ALU operation. The flag register is also alternately referred to as program status word. PSW a flag register is a 8-bit special purpose register used in 8085 architecture to indicate the CPU status after each arithmetic and logical operation. The 8085 flags register can have a total of 8 flags. Each flag is represented by a specific bit in the 8-bit flag register. However, the 8085 processor use only 5 flags out of 8 flags and the remaining 3 flags are kept unused. The 5 flags used in the flag register include the carry flag, auxiliary carry flag, sign flag, parity flag, and the zero flag. All right, so far, we have discussed in detail different types of CPU registers and their respective functions. Let us now move on to next important topic. And that topic is timing and control unit of the 8085 microprocessor. The CPU is driven by a stream of the clock signals generated by the clock circuit built into the processor chip. These clock signals helps the CPU to synchronize the operations of its internal components, various registers, and other external hardware devices. The clock pulses and the control signals are generated by the timing and control unit of the CPU that is built into the processor chip. The control signals are essential to manage and control the operations of the various hardware devices connected to the system. The control unit of the processor also sends the control signals to all the hardware components and peripheral devices necessary to control their operations. The timing and control signals are essential part of the instruction cycle, which is a basic operation of the CPU. The CPU to execute the program instructions one by one by repetitively performing the instruction cycle. For each clock pulse, the CPU executes a part of the instruction during the program execution. Okay, so now you know the importance of timing and control unit of the CPU. Let us now discuss another important component of the 8085 architecture. And that topic is interrupts. As the name suggests, the interrupts are used to current execution sequence of the CPU. The interrupts are the signals sent to the microprocessor to pause the current activity and attend to the request sent by the external devices. In other words, the interrupts are external events that occur in real time to seek the processor response. The interrupts can be generated either by the program instructions or it can also be generated by the peripheral devices connected to the system. The 8085 architecture supports eight software interrupts and five hardware interrupts. The interrupt can be classified into the following groups depending upon their parameters. The interrupt types are first the software interrupt, second the hardware interrupt, third vector interrupt, fourth non-vector interrupt, fifth maskable interrupt, and finally sixth the non-maskable interrupt. All right, so far we have discussed what are interrupts and different types of interrupts used in the 8085 processor. Let us now discuss the final topic of this video tutorial, which is another important component of the 8085 architecture. And that topic is 8085 bus architecture and the bus interface. The computer buses are the group of wires running across the computer system through which the data, address and the control signals are transferred. The microprocessor needs to communicate with the various system hardware components in order to execute the program instructions. The microprocessor chip also has its own internal buses essential for the functioning of the processor. The 8085 architecture has 8-bit data bus and 16-bit address bus. Let us now discuss different types of buses and its function. The first component of the bus architecture is the address bus. 
The address bus is a 16-bit unidirectional bus that is used to transfer the 16-bit address between the CPU and the main memory RAM. The second component of the bus architecture is the data bus. The data bus is a 8-bit bidirectional bus that is used to transfer the 8-bit data between the CPU and the main memory RAM. The CPU performs both memory read and write operation during the program execution. This data transfer takes place on the data bus. The third component of the bus architecture is the control bus. The control bus is a bidirectional bus that is used to transfer the control signals between the CPU and the various hardware devices connected to the computer system. All right. So, now you have enough knowledge about all important CPU components, various functional units, and the technical features for Intel 8085 microprocessor architecture. And, that brings us to the end of this tutorial. Please read the detailed article on our website, learncomputersciencesonline.com, for more details. And in this tutorial, we have discussed the Intel 8085 architecture in detail. If you have liked this video, then please give us a thumbs up and do consider to subscribe to this channel for more such interesting videos. Thanks for watching, and I will see you soon with another computer science video tutorial.